Okay. <clears throat> wow. Dear Heavenly and Righteous Father, we are very humbly before your presence this night, grateful to be together with the saints. And dear Lord, we rally together to um, support one another, whether it be Brother Kevin's lesson or whether it be those who are afflicted. You know our hearts, dear Lord. We are burdened down with many things that we're concerned about. But we know, dear Lord, it's all in your hands. You've told the church that we are in the palms of your hands. And I thank you, dear Lord, for that's a safe place. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the hope that we have of a better day coming and for eternal life. Dear Lord, we are a very blessed people. Thank you so much. Remember, especially Sister Susan Morocco tonight. Touch her with your wonderful hands and bless the Capone family. Comfort them, dear Lord. Comfort that you promised in your scriptures. And dear Lord, Bless our brother Scott and others that um, need you at this time. And we thank you. And we ask that you would bless the lesson tonight that we might all leave at the end of it with a, a joyful heart and with gratitude to Lord for what you've given us. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we love you. And we ask all these things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, uh, I'll go ahead and... Uh... I'm going to mute our line, and then I'll unmute you, Brother Kevin, and then would you like me to um, share the slides from my side? I think, uh, Brother Kevin, go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? There we go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. So yeah, you share the slides, brother, and I'll okay. do the best I can here. It's like I said, it's only been a couple times that I've done a Zoom lesson, so we'll, we'll do the best we can. Sounds great. I'll go ahead and get those up here then. go back here to the beginning okay <laughs> there we go so brothers and sisters first before we start i just want to say to those that are from my branch that might be on the call they've seen this lesson we did this back in january i believe and uh with a very positive very well taken lesson i hope it's the same tonight brothers and sisters i'm sure it will be i look across the panel here and i said there's so much wisdom here and what am i going to teach these brothers and sisters they should be teaching me so we're going to learn together we'll, we'll see how it goes uh if anybody wants to interject please feel free to any questions any observation experiences we're always looking for those so this is the title stay away to heaven we always want to know how we're going to get there so this lesson is about those steps we have to take to get there and the steps that we shouldn't take to get there. But we got to understand this. The, here's the disclaimer. None of us going to get there. It's only going to be via the grace of God. Nothing that we can do is going to get us in. It's only going to be by his love and his forgiveness for us. So with that said, this is, this lesson is over about chapter five of Alma. And if you want to click on that a couple of times, Jeremy. One more. Here's the first two verses. Back up one. Okay. Here's the first two verses, brothers and sisters. And I got to try to fix this because I can't. There we go. So this is a time when Alma, the son of Alma, was, he was the chief judge and the high priest of the church. And he was looking out upon the nation, even the church itself, and he saw so much moral decay that he decided that he had to give up that chief judge seat so that he could focus on the spiritual well-being of the city of Zarahelma and all the cities round about. So here's this first two verses. It says, Behold, I can tell you, did not my father Alma believe in the words which were delivered by the mouth of Abinadi? And was he not a holy prophet? Did he not speak the words of God 
And my father, Al Alma, believed them. Verse 12. And according to his face, there was a mighty change wrought in his heart. Behold, I say unto you that this is all true. Next one, please. And behold, he preached the words unto your fathers. And a mighty change was wrought also, and also wrought in his heart, in their hearts. And they humbled themselves and put their trust in the true living God. And behold, they were faithful until the end, therefore they were saved. <sighs> I'm working on it, brothers and sisters. I got two computers going, so. Brother Jeremy, go to the next one, please. So here you see a, an anvil. And it's raw is a verb, it's work, it's elaborate, embellish, not rough or crude, produce or shaped by beating with a hammer as iron or silver articles. Next one. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to read a little bit and we're going to get into some questions. Now, when it's talking about rotten, rot upon your heart, I want to ask you, brothers and sisters. When, can you remember the first time the Spirit of God worked upon your heart? Now, I can, I can, I'll share mine, and then hopefully some of you brothers and sisters can share some of yours. The first time, now mind you, brothers and sisters, I never was a, a member of any church prior to coming to the Church of Jesus Christ. I, I think I went to church once or twice as a young child with my grandmother, but that was all. So I knew nothing else but the Church of Jesus Christ. And I was in the church one day. I think I'd been coming for four or five months. And I'm sitting and I'm listening to the preaching. And I, I just, I don't know how to describe it. It just felt this anxiety. It was so foreign to me. It was so foreign that I, I actually literally got up out of my seat and walked outside of the building and sat down on the steps. And I was crying and I was confused. And I didn't know what was going on. And a sister came out, a sister deaconess came out and sat down and talked to me. And I think that was my, that was the time when I was standing on the cliff and say, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go that way. And thank God the sister came in and talked me back into that. The Lord was working on my heart and I didn't, I it was so foreign. I didn't realize what he, what was going on. So I thank God today that, that she was able to talk me in back into the, the sanctuary and, I'm still here today, brothers and sisters, so it was a good turnout. So here, here is three verses. And 2 Nephi is bad. I think this is in 559 B.C. So this is 500 years before Elmer was talking to the people of Zarahemla. And I want you to look at these things, these three verses. Now there's two from the Bible, one from the Book of Mormon. Second Nephi and Isaiah are exactly the same, the same exact words. But he talks about it. He says, he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they turn, learn war anymore. So they, they, they was worked. They, their hearts was worked just like. Elmer is trying to work on the hearts, even how God works on our hearts. If you look, and I know you all know this, if you look across the nation today, brothers and sisters, and I know you see this, moral decay, it seems like it's taken over. But you know what? You and I and the rest of the brothers and sisters and the saints of the Church of Jesus Christ are the shining lights that need to glow at this time when it's so dark in our nation. Brother Jeremy, can you move forward? There's another piece of scripture, a reference that talks it and said, <clears throat> this was 559. And after they had been received unto baptism and were wrought upon and cleansed by the power of the Holy Ghost, they were numbered among the people of the church of Christ and their names were taken and they, that they might be remembered and nourished by the good word of God to keep them in the right way and to keep them continually watchful unto prayer. Relying along, along, excuse me, alone upon the merits of Christ, who was the author and finisher of their faith. Go ahead, brother Jeremy. And now, behold, I ask you, 
And he's speaking to the church, brothers and sisters. He's talking directly to the members of the church. Now, behold, I ask you, my brethren of the church, have you been spiritually born of God? Have you received his image in your countenance? Have you experienced this mighty change in your hearts? Now, we're going to go into some questions. And this is where I'm looking for some uh, participation from you all. <clears throat> and now, behold, <clears throat> go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. One more. Yeah. What does it mean to be spiritually born of God? Now, I put these references here, belief, repentance, character change, baptism, and reception of the Holy Ghost. This is where I'm looking for some input from you, brothers and sisters. What do you think it means to be spiritually born of God? Change of heart. Yes, absolutely. Let me, let me give you some background of, of, of Brother Kevin when, when he first came into the church. Brother Kevin was a, uh, I know, I was a hardworking guy, thought I did things right most of the time, but I really didn't have a lot of concern for other than myself. And from a broken family, I'm not going to get into the whole pity story and all that, but I was from a broken family and uh, there wasn't a lot of love in my family. Let's put it that way. I lived in a foster home. They did all that stuff. But then when I came back into the church and this change came on me, I learned how to love again. I know that's probably hard for some to believe that you could actually stop and forget how to love. But I sat in that little Tampa building for a year and watched the brothers and sisters just, just, just watching them. And it may, amazed how they treated each other, how they loved each other. You know, every Sunday I would go home to one of the brothers and sisters' home and we would eat and we'd talk and we'd sing and we'd pray. I think we've lost a little bit of that, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Any other comments? Any other thoughts about spiritually born of God? Can I ask what brought you to the church? Uh, she's sitting on, she's on the call. <laughs> her name is, her name is, her name then was Stacy Walton. Uh, she, she invited me. We worked together. Stacy and I worked together for, I don't know, seven years. So we knew each other. And uh, she, one day she just asked me to go to the church with her. And, and you know, and I said, okay. So I went to the church and it was, uh, and then I, you know, I came back and I came back and it just, you know, brothers and sisters, and I know you've all heard this and you're going to hear it again. It was the love. It was the love of the saints and how they mm -hmm. greeted you and how they treated you. That's, that's, that's what got me there. And that's what kept me coming back. You want to know what grounded me? When the Lord healed my son of epilepsy. Mm. right there in front of us on wow. Wednesday night, anointed with oil. And you've read the story if you read John DeBattista's book. It was, uh, it, it solidified my faith and my belief. And I have no doubt. I don't, I don't even want to call it faith because it's knowledge because I saw it right before my own eyes. I watched my son go through 10 seizures a day. Mm. And to have him stop the very night that he was prayed for, you can't tell me that's nothing but a miracle. Right. And he's right. on this call too, and he's listening at me. How old was he? Well, that's he was seven. He's 26 oh. now. Wow. He's helping he's helping us right now with this stuff here. All this camera. He's got a camera here and a big speaker and all this stuff set up for me. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so that's cool. He's a deacon in the church. So, yeah, it's been a really a wonderful, wonderful walk. And, uh, I am so grateful and thankful that he took me from where I was because it wasn't a pretty place. It was, uh, you know, I, I knew I was looking for something. I just wasn't sure what it was. And then I found the Lord. And it's, Amen. I don't know, it's been 20 some years now. Wow. Wonderful. Anything Brother else? Kevin. Anybody else? I was thinking, yes. Brother Kevin, that 
belief is is that first stepping stone you know yes, and um the lord um bring brought me there because i really wanted to know if he existed and once i found and i started believing and like you said seeing people in the church how they treat one another the love was that was there that that drew me on and it still is there and it still draws me on and keeps me strong without that i i don't think i could make it you know without my brothers and sisters we need each other that is so true sister because you know we count on each other so much now i mean yeah for the good and the bad you know, we right. share everything. And, the, and that's the way, I think that's the way the Lord wants his family to be. We share all our, our needs and our wants and our desires and mm -hmm. our joys. Right. We can't forget the joys because there's a lot of joys. Anything else? Brother Kevin. Yes. Um. Uh, I think belief for me was a part of the big change because when, you know, I like you, I, I wasn't raised in this church, but I, I always sought him out. I always sought the things of God, but never could find things. And when I came to this church, like you say, the first thing I felt was love. But also when I came to this church, I didn't believe in the speaking in tongues. I didn't believe in the Book of Mormon. But you know what? God used both of those things to show me that this was his church. Mm -hmm. The first Sunday that I came to church, uh, you know, Brother Ken Hatch, and he stood up and he, he yes, I did. something, and I, I thought, why is he doing this? I mean, I literally knew nothing because I would even ask my husband, am I supposed to pray when they pray? Am I allowed to pray when they did? I, I didn't know. I didn't want to offend anybody. And I didn't understand why he was saying what he was saying, why they were preaching it. And that happened two Sundays in a row. And the third Sunday, I didn't understand. So, you know, talking to, you know, the elders and teachers at church, I understood then that I understood speaking in tongues. And what I heard the first two Sundays were, take my hand and walk with me into the water. And that just wow. like, whew. It just made me search and pray even harder and look for answers. And that was just the beginning. So I thank God, you know, he does change our heart. He changes what we believe. And he, and he <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny Go you ahead. had a, a Benadi in there because after I started reading the Book of Mormon, after I learned about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when I got, I started at the beginning of the Book of Mormon, I wanted to read it and ask God just about this book. And when I got the Mosiah and after uh, a, Alma's conversion, when I got to the 18th chapter in the 10th verse, and he says, I say now, after I've said all these things, you know, I'm paraphrasing, I say, what have you got against being baptized? And I thought, yeah, what do I, you know, everything I've read, I, I feel, I understand what he's saying to me. And I know that was God revealing that to me. So I can't thank God enough for what he does. Amen. Amen, sister. I remember when we had that meeting up in mid-Georgia and we took uh, Stacy chairs to the water to baptism. We baptized. We got back to the branch, if you remember, yep. and your daughter stood up and said, I want to be baptized. So back down to the pond we went. Yes, we <laughs> it was did. a beautiful day. Yes, it was. It was a beautiful day. All right, Brother Jeremy, let's go to the the next one, please. So here's a question. Have you received his image in your countenance? What does this look like? So what does it look like to receive his countenance, the image of his face or his countenance in yours? What does this look like? Anybody? Grace and love. Have you, excuse me? Grace and love. Yes, absolutely. Um, have you ever had somebody you just look, you have this glow about you? 
I was just getting ready to say, Brother Kevin, it's when somebody says there's something about you. I don't know, but there's something about you. Um, Brother Kevin, we had an older yes. brother in the branch, Brother Rock and Santa, and he would always say that when he looked at the congregation, he saw God because he could see God in each one of us. And uh, that was very yeah. encouraging. Yes, that's beautiful. Brother Jeremy, couple of clicks. One more. One more. There you go. Have you experienced the mighty change in your heart? One more, Brother Jeremy. Oop, back up. Back up one. Good. I think there's a delay. Okay. That's okay. What change is being referenced? Anybody want to? We had a change in our hearts. Yeah, we all we all had to in order to go into that waters of redemption. What change is this? What change is let me give you an example. When I came into the church, I was a uh, I smoked cigarettes, I drank beer, I, I, I dabbled in marijuana, all these things. When I came into the church and I got to know Jesus Christ, all those things. Before I was back, all those things were gone and you know, that very day and never touched again. Mm. That's a change. That's your heart change. You do with 180. <laughs> Go right back the other way from where, where you was walking to where you really need to be on that stairway. Brother Kevin? Yes. I am. Um... I felt that when I got baptized, it was like my life had changed forever. It's like when you get married and you enter into that covenant, your life is now changed forever. And so when I made that covenant with the Lord, I knew my life was changed forever. True. I'm going to share a little testimony. When I got baptized, it was on Davis Island. I don't, a lot of you don't know where that is, but it's downtown Tampa. And it's a little island where the hospital is, and it's like a, a marina is where we baptize in. And when we went into the waters that morning, it was December 29th. And anywhere else would be really, really, really cold, but it was, you know, we're in Florida, but it was still pretty cold. <laughs> and I remember walking out, and I, Ike, Joe, Ike Joe Smith baptized me. And uh, when we were walking out, I looked over at Ike. Because all the sisters told me, all the sisters, and I'm not blaming all you sisters, but all those sisters told me at the branch, oh, don't worry, you won't feel a thing. Mm -hmm. when, me, when me and Ike was walking out there, I go, hey, Ike. I said, yeah. He said, water's cold. <laughs> I said, the water's cold. But you know what? We looked down, and on the bottom of the, the water, on the bottom on the sand, you could see all these cans and stuff, beer cans and Coke cans, and we was just kind of like kicking them out of the way as we was walking out. And after, after I came out of the water, I know everybody feels this. You look and all these people on the beach, and I, you know, I've been coming to the church for about a year. So I knew pretty much everybody. There were people there that I didn't know, but you loved them all. You, you just, you, you feel so light and all the pressures and all the things, the guilt, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, is lifted off your shoulder. Now, when Mike and I walk back in, we came the same path. I mean, it's not exactly the same path, but close enough. Did you know none of that trash was there? Wow. All that trash was gone. That was a miracle for me. I just mm -hmm. like, wow. All those things that were in my life were pushed aside. Hmm. I really like anybody the, else. Yeah, I was gonna say I really like the, the verse that you brought out, uh, Brother Kevin, and it's uh and the parts that you have emphasized that we might uh, put our attention upon are also uh, striking to me. And, you know, it's interesting in Alma 5.14 that he's addressing the church and he's saying, 
brethren of the church, have ye had this change? Have you been, you know, spiritually born? And you might assume if he's talking to the people of the church, of course they've had that change. But he's asking the question, well, have you really? Has that change been uh, a sincere change? And um, have you gone through that process? And, you know, you had mentioned being wrought upon. And, you know, if you think about iron work, that's not light work, right? That's a, a work of labor. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great process, a great work, and a great change. It's not a small thing, but a mighty thing. Uh, in, that's the word here, right, that's used. It's a mighty change in your hearts. And, and I think someone uh, described it as a lasting, as a permanent change. Uh, it's, a, it's a sweeping change. It's a deep change. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's a complete change, right? Even to the point of affecting the expression upon your face. Because that's really, I think, what it's saying here is that his image, which would be one of, you know, love and truth and grace and spirit, like we've all talked about, would actually be reflected in our countenance or face, in other words. So even our very expression, you know, you think about why people would say you're different. Um, you, you seem different to me. What is it about you? Well, you know, if, if that change has been complete, and I think, you know, we're, in my opinion, I'm, I'm at various stages of that change in my life. Maybe we all are, you know, we're going through that ongoing change. Um, and, you know, I hope that that's the expression upon my face that, it, you know, I, people see joy and love when they look upon me, that, that I might be a reflection of Christ, that they would see that I'm not sour or angry or, or, you know, some other sort of negative uh, disposition, but rather that my face even and a smile would, would testify of Christ in my life. Brother Kevin, um, in Mosiah, the fifth chapter, in, when King Benjamin's people had accepted the Lord, um, they talk about having a mighty change in their hearts, and they describe it as having no more disposition to do evil, but to do good continually. And that uh, they would believe um, the they have a great view of that which is to come. And if it were possible, they would prophesy of all things. So this faith had developed in them. Their, um, their disposition has changed and they became the children of God. That was the gift that King Benjamin gave his people. Amen. Yes. Brother Kevin. Yes. Uh, Brother yes, Chad here. As I listen, I also uh, remember when I first met the church, I saw a peculiar people. And as yes. our uh, Brother Jerry mentioned, uh, the, pro the word uh, process, I knew that I hadn't gotten there. I knew I didn't belong. But I knew that they had something that I wanted something that I, I uh, really needed, but I didn't have. And I came to the church through invitation. And as I came, I grew closer and closer. And as I was accepted, I accepted the uh, word uh, of God. I accepted the Book of Mormon. And mm -hmm. uh, to, to the point where I uh, really fell in love with the church and all of our brothers and sisters too. and. Mm -hmm it appeared that they fell in love with me too. So <laughs> one thing I, I, uh, I knew that every time I came to church and even today, I'm excited when I walk through those doors and I'm saddened a little bit when I, I walk out because I don't see our brothers and sisters until the next time. So I, <laughs> I just wanted to bring those things out that the Lord blessed me so much that I'm still excited today Mm -hmm. about being a brother in the church of Jesus Christ. Can I speak? Yeah, Can I speak? Yes, go ahead, brother. This is Joe Shirola. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother Joe. From uh, Modesto. 
everybody has a different type of experience that would fit them to come into the mm -hmm. church. Everybody's different, not everybody's the same. I spent three years in the service and a couple years in Korea and the Lord got me out of that war. And when I come home and my friends are on drugs and stealing and I don't want no part with them. But I used very bad language, um, went dancing and everything. And all of a sudden I was not going to church. The Lord started to remove everything from me. The, the 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 bad words he took it out of my mouth um i went dancing i stepped on all over this girl's feet and i had to sit down um i used to go one movie to the next and i then go to the movies i was just he took everything away from me and i was yet to go to church and then i started to go to church and then the lord touched my heart and that's when i repented and was become baptized i've been 70 years in the church and i only went to one movie i wanted to see the ten commandments i've not gone to any other movies and i don't like what they're seeing today mm -hmm. and so um uh, in the 15th chapter of saint john jesus says i'm the vine and you're the branches abide in me and I will abide in you. And that's what I found that it was true to this day. Amen. May God bless you. God bless you too, brother. Amen. Beautiful. All right, brother Jeremy, let's skip to the next one. Here's some compliment. It's just some scripture that goes along with what we're talking about. And the Lord said unto me, Marvel not that all mankind, yea, men, women, all nations, kindred, tongues, and people must be born again, yea, born of God, changed from their carnal and their fallen state to a state of, right, state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. Next one, Jeff, Jeremy. <clears throat> Jesus, these are Jesus' words now. Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. So these are things that we have to do. These are not exceptions. These are, we have to do these. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. There's a, go to the next one, Brother Jeremy. These are a couple pictures here. And on the, on the left is Brother Brian Griffith baptizing his son, Connor. And on the right, we know Brother John, and that's Connor, his grandson. Just thought I'd give you, this wasn't too long ago when this happened. It was a very, very touching day and beautiful day. It's always a beautiful day when we have a baptism. All right, Brother, next one. Alma 15, do you exercise faith in redemption of him who created you? Do you look forward with an eye of faith in the view of this mortal body raised in immortality and this corruption raised in incorruption to stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have done in the mortal body? Next. What does it mean to exercise faith? <clears throat> Someone care to take a stab at that one? How do we exercise our faith? You know, to get stronger, you have to exercise your muscles. If you want your faith to get stronger, we exercise our faith. So how do we do that? Believe in things unseen. True. Put everything in the hands, Put everything in the hands of God. Yeah. Yes. When we if have we, a problem, I, bring it to yes. the Lord and you pray and, and you know you're going to get an answer. Now, whether it's the answer you want or the answer he wants, you know, well, you know, you, you pray and wait for the answer. 
sometimes I think sometimes we, or I should say me, will have the circumstance, whatever it might be, and you go in prayer and you lay it at the Lord's feet, but then you pick it back up. Yes. You, know what I mean? you pick it back up and you carry that weight. When, yeah, we right. it, when we leave it with Christ, we got to leave it at his feet and let him take it. Mm -hmm. Okay, an eye of faith. Anybody got examples of eye, an eye of faith? One of the, one of the examples that I can say, uh, are you hearing me? Yes, I am. No. He's not talking. Okay. <laughs> he was. <laughs> All right, Brother Jeremy, let's just go ahead to number 16. Is it? Okay. Interesting fact. We're going to skip right to this. And it says, we will be immortal before judgment is cast. We're all going to stand before the Lord immortal. But when judgment is cast, we're either going to go here or there. Well, we'll it's forever. It's forever, whether it's in hell or heaven. It is forever. There is no end. Yeah, Next brother, one, brother Jeremy. Go ahead. Just, yeah, I was just going to comment on the prayer verse, the idea of an eye of faith. It sort of goes along with this. You know, the word talks about a time when we would go before the Lord. And, you know, we certainly understand this mortal body is temporary. And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't last very long. And so um, in, in the Book of Mormon, it describes Lehi as what kind of man, a visionary man, right? He had that eye of faith as a visionary person who could picture those things that were not physical, but spiritual. And so he looked ahead and he could, he could really clearly, I think, picture in his mind the things God had promised. And I think that's sort of one way to look at this is that uh, we need to look forward with that ability to picture those things that God has, has promised us as though they are and as though they will be. And we know uh, that we look ahead to uh, those things and that they will come to pass. Brother, going along with what Brother Jeremy said, uh, he was shown that and that eye of faith let him know that it was fact he just believed god told me and i believe it and what we have is the word of what he saw and when we read that the spirit confirms it with us and we believe isn't it amazing how those our brothers and sisters before us had so much faith yet they don't have all the records that we have. They didn't have all these things that we have. This word, the word of God was right here. We have it in our hands and we can look at it. But think about these brothers and sisters way back in this time. They don't, they don't have what we have. Yet we still struggle sometimes. People struggle to believe it. Not, I'm not talking about us, brothers and sisters, but in the world, they struggle even to believe it anymore. I can remember the days when people would, I always thought that people that went to church, I would ride in my little hometown. I'm a, I'm a little farm boy from Lincoln, Maine, it's a population 3,000. We would drive by at the two churches that were in the, in the town. It would be like the thoughts that would end your mind, oh, those are the good people. You know, you would look at them like, oh, they're, they're so, those are the really good people. They, they're different. You know, lo and behold, you know, when I came into the church, I found out that you all had the same problems that I did. It was a, it was a shocker. If you know what I mean. Anyway, Brother Jeremy, can we go to the next one? And I, I don't know what time is it getting to be okay. Because we're going to come up to a break here in a minute. 
But if you could skip to the next one. I missed it. Oh, there you go. These are the words that, that we want to hear in the end. And I say unto you, can you imagine to yourself that you will hear the voice of the Lord saying unto you in that day, it should be in the red, come unto me, ye blessed, for behold, your works have been the works of righteousness upon the face of the earth. Sure. It should be, but they're not. But these are what we want to hear the Lord say. Come in. Be blessed. Now, Brother Jeremy? Yeah. We have, I mean, I'm, I'm about halfway. This is the, how I put it, this is the, the good side of the stairway. The next half of this is more of the, the, the things that we probably shouldn't do. Do we want to dag, step into that or do you want to save it for another time? I don't want to keep the brothers and sisters too late. Yeah, we can maybe pause and see if uh, there's some more comments. And if we, um, yeah. um, if we have some good discussion, we can pause there and, and wrap it up. Uh, I think that uh, we've got a great groundwork laid here for... Um, oh, it's beautiful. A lot of great comments already as well. Praise God. We're, you know, we're on seven, slide 17, and there's, I think there's 41 slides. So brothers and sisters, we can... We can move on and we can go forward a little bit more or we can come back and do this another time. It's, it's truly up to you. I'm sure, open yeah. to anything. If you'd like to do a few more and, and kind of get, um, get the feel, the midpoint, that'd be great. Okay. Let's just read this next couple here and we'll see what we get. All right. Great. Go ahead. Number 517. This is the other side. This is the flip side of the coin, if you will. Or do you imagine to yourselves that you can lie unto the Lord in that day and say, Lord, our works have been righteous works upon the face of the earth and that he will save you. 18. Or otherwise, can you imagine yourself brought before the tribunal of God with your souls filled with guilt and remorse, having a remembrance of all your guilt, yea, a perfect remembrance of all your wickedness, Yea, a remembrance that ye have set at a defiance the commandments of God. You see, this is, you know, you, you, you hate the, but you have to talk about just the opposition. Because there's always been opposition. And uh, on the next, the next slide that's coming up, I heard a sermon on this way back many years ago by Brother Dan Paravano Sr. And he, he read out of Second Nephi in the second chapter of Second Nephi. And if I'm sure you've read it, it's all it's about opposition. And there has to be opposition because if you don't have one, you can't have the other. Because so how do you know if it's good if you don't know what bad is? So, Brother Jeremy, if you would skip to the next slide, I'll read this. And because of the intercession for all, all men come unto God, wherefore they stand in the presence of him to be judged of him according to the truth and the holiness which is in him. Wherefore the ends of the law which the Holy One hath given unto the afflicting of the punishment which is affixed, which punishment that is affixed is in opposition to that of happiness which is affixed, to answer the ends of the atonement, and to bring about his eternal purposes in the end of man. After he had created our first parents in the beast of the field, in the fowls of the air, and in fine all things which are created, it must needs be that there was an opposition, even the forbidden fruit in opposition to the tree of life, the one being sweet and the other being bitter. And that was one sermon I wish I would have had a recording of because it was, it was remarkable. It really was. Next slide, Brother Jeremy. Well, on this slide here, this is a, a pet peeve with mine. And if you ask my children, you can you can do a lot of things and, and you know tell me the truth, even if it hurts, but don't lie to me. 
because that's just it's just one of those things you just don't do and this is this is the revelation 21 27 it says and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the lamb's book of life And I want to be always written in that Lamb's book of life, forever and always. So if a lie is going to keep me out of the out of heaven, mm. right? A lie. It says right there, or maketh a lie. So we must be very careful what we do, and always remember, always remember. That we have a great mediator that goes before the Lord, before God, before us. That's why we kneel and ask forgiveness for when we make mistakes and we slip up. And, and, and it happens, brothers and sisters. You know, Paul always said, I die to sin daily. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, things happen. But we always, we got that perfect plan of Jesus Christ is to say, Lord, I know I made a mistake. Just please forgive me. Brother Kevin, yes. um, I remember one time I was by myself. I don't even remember what the situation was, but I had a decision to make. You know, it's like on one side, it's good. On one side, it's bad. You know, like the little devil and the little angel. Yeah. So I was thinking to myself, well, if I did that, nobody would really see. And then I thought about it and I said, no, God would see and I would know. So that really helped me in my decision making process. <laughs> and I thank God for that. Amen. I mean, you've heard of the silken cord. I'm sure we've all heard that one. You know, we, sometimes mm -hmm. Satan will get one little thin thing and it breaks real easy. He doesn't get a hold on you. But as he multiplies those little cords, then it turns into a cord and into a <laughs> rope. And then you just can't get away. So we must be careful. All right, Brother Jeremy, let's go with one more, ver one more set here. I want to tell the story of the rich man. Uh, the, the young man saith unto him all. Now, this is a young man that has done everything. I'm sure his parents told him, okay, you got to do this for the church. You got to do that. You got to pray. You got to fast. You got to tithe. You got to do all these things. And he, and he says, he goes, and the young man says, all these things I have kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. Now it doesn't tell us any further whatever happened to this man, but it leads you to think that he, because of what he had, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't let go of it. Now, I'm going to say something. I don't mean this in any wrong way. I know the Lord knows not to let me have money because it wouldn't be good. I, I need to be in a place where I can walk away without any thoughts about it. So I, I kind of think if I had a big Taj Mahal with all this stuff, that it would be really harder. When the time comes, when he says, come and follow me, that I would get stuck. I wouldn't want to be this young ruler, young rich ruler here or in the, and get stuck because of some of the things I have. It's not bad to have things. It's not bad at all. It's to love them more than the Lord. That's what we have to look out for. It's not the money or the riches or whatever you have. It's do you love them more than our Savior? That's what we have to be careful of. It's not the money. You've heard this saying before. It's not the money. It's the love of money. Any comments? Anybody else got a thought on that? My husband used to tell me that he would pray that we never had more than what we needed. And I said, so you're the reason we're poor, huh? <laughs> Maybe that's why I am too. <laughs> <laughs> In, in the Book of Mormon, it states that um, 
It's nothing wrong to have money or riches, but for one purpose only, to remember the needy, the poor, and the sick, and the afflicted. And if we do that, we still have plenty for ourselves. Amen. Well, there's also, uh, I, I had an experience way back in 80, I don't know, 84, 85. 89. And uh, maybe it was even, even in 89, but uh, I, the experience that I'm going to relate to is I was sitting there and uh, the Lord spoke to me and he said the same thing he asked Peter. He said, lovest thou these more than me? And that's where we have to be, I think, as a church, as a people, even in our own personal. We have to love the Lord more than anything because he can give us all. And he did. He gave me. Everything that I have today, all my experience as far as my my trade, uh, my experience as far as the spiritual life, he's given all. And I got to love him more. Doesn't matter. He'll give you. He doesn't need our money. He can give us what we need, what we stand in need of. And he will take care of us. He did it for the children of Israel. He'll do it for us. God bless you, brothers. God bless you too, brother. Amen. Are you camping tonight, Brother Milford? Uh, no, I'm not. But I will be tomorrow night. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I'm camping uh, down in uh, in uh, in Fort Myers, uh, Cape Coral area. And I'm going to be going to Cape Coral on uh, Sunday. So I'll be camping down that way. Okay, good. Well, I'll just live vicariously then. Tell me all about it next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brother Jeremy, I think we're going to go ahead and, and, and wrap it up right there, if you don't mind. And if yeah. brothers and sisters care, we can pick it up again next week or some other time. That sounds great. Yeah, if you're available um, next week, Brother Kevin, that would be great. Um, if, if something comes up, that's okay, too. We can move it around if need be. I know that's life sometimes, but uh, otherwise, uh, I'd love to hear the rest and um, if there's other thoughts or comments, brothers and sisters, that you have this evening, um, we still have a little bit of time to share those if you'd like. Um, and I, I would just maybe uh, encourage some thoughts along this line. Um, you know, one of the scriptures Brother Kevin shared with us, again, was addressing the church, the members of the church, and asking uh, to the brethren of the church, have you experienced this change? And then Brother Kevin brought out another verse that talked about exercising faith. And, you know, if you're exercising for a goal, you don't just step into the race day one and win. If you want to lift more, you don't just go to uh, the bench and lift the, the, the goal weight on day one, right? And so exercise would, would indicate an ongoing process. And, uh, you know, then in this verse uh, that, that we ended with, uh, it talks about that rich man. And he, he said, I have done these things since my youth. He was in the process of serving God. And he had certainly made efforts, you know, to follow the way of the Lord. But then when he talked to Christ and, and he says, what do I lack? <laughs> you know, if we go before the Lord and say, Lord, what, what could I possibly lack? He'll find something, right? <laughs> and, you know, it was sort of the, the naive, naiveness of this, uh, this uh, young man to go to the Lord and say, you know, surely I've, I've done all that I can, right, Lord? And, and, and Christ answered him and said, uh, you're not there yet. If you would be perfect, you need to part with the things of this life and be willing to sacrifice those fleshly comforts and that wealth for the things which are spiritual. And so, you know, we, um, I think I was listening to a sermon earlier this week from Brother David Pachuto in Mesa Branch, and he was talking about in his sermon that uh, you can't just read the word and take out the parts that you don't like. You know, and as we look tonight at this change our brother Kevin has uh, taught us about and exhorted us on, we know that that change is a complete change. 
And if you want more of a complete change in your life, I would say read more completely the word of God and apply it completely to your life. And uh, it, we won't have to look far. You know, if we do like David did and we go to the Lord in prayer or even like this uh, young rich man and go to the Lord and say, show me, you know, with an earnest heart, what it is that I lack. The Lord will be able to find something uh, that we can build upon in our character that we're not yet uh, quite um, fully accomplished and optimized and perfected in, you know, so there's always more uh, to grow in the Lord. And I think that's a good thing to do, you know, to go before the Lord and say, Father, what it is, what is it that I still need to work on and, and show me? And, and with that willing heart and that entreatable spirit, I think that he will uh, give us that teaching and that wisdom that we might continue to grow in the Lord and to draw closer to him. And what's, what's the result of a complete change? It's that countenance of joy, and it's the complete blessings of God, is it not? If we put ourselves out there and extend our faith more fully in the Lord, will he not bless us more fully? And so we have a great, uh, a great opportunity before us tonight that we would listen to this message and realize that sometimes that message of change isn't just for those who are beginning to come into the church, who are just about to get baptized and make a covenant, but it's an ongoing message that we might be encouraged to continue on in exercising faith and changing and refining, that our hearts might be more filled and more pure, and that we would be set aside and sanctified for the purposes that God has for us. Because I don't know about you, but I want more of God's power in my life, that when I walk down the streets, I might be able to meet a stranger and be ready with a quick answer to give them of the hope that I have, that I might be quick and able to share a, a testimony that would change their lives, that I might be able to stand upon the teachings of God and under, help someone understand what it is to follow the process of redemption and salvation. And that's the plan that our brother's been talking to us about tonight, that great plan of redemption and how motivating it is tonight. And beautiful, I would say, that it is tonight, that we might understand that it's not just one day so many years ago, but it's today and tomorrow and ongoing. And so we have uh, much to look forward to. And the purposes of God in our lives, they are significant and never-ending. And so we don't run out of challenge as we try to, uh, you know, perfect ourselves before the Lord. We don't run out of uh, a goal or that next step, you know, and I thank God for that because that's meaningful. It brings meaning to my life. And I know that it's not in vain that the scriptures say that we must endure till the end. And as we endure to the end, I'm not thinking... I'm going to drag myself across that finish line limping. I'm hoping that I go faster and faster, that my hope would get brighter and brighter until that perfect day, like the scripture says. And so uh, there's much to be excited about. And I think, you know, as the Book of Mormon asks us, how is your heart now? You know, can you sing that song of redeeming grace now? I would ask you today, are you filled with passion and joy and zeal for the Lord, such that would be contagious to those around you, that they might be uplifted by the, 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 the spirit and the countenance that you wear and, and exhibit in your life? Uh, so I would just say, if you have a thought or an experience or anything in, in, a, long, in a line with uh, our, our theme, our lesson tonight, uh, we'd like to open it up for your comments. Brother Jeremy. Yeah. Um, I think I've told my experience before, but it's be it's through the experiences that we grow. <clears throat> it's some of us grow slowly. The change doesn't just come immediately when we go down into the water and come up. We feel wonderful and full of love. But the change comes slowly, depending on how much you do for the Lord. And I found early in my life when a trial comes, when the sickness of a child comes, that you have to turn your whole heart and life to the Lord. 
you have to depend on him to get you through that struggle because you cannot do it yourself. And when we lean upon the Lord, instead of trying to understand the problem ourselves, he takes us through. And as we go on, I think the old we get the more serious about Sir Lord, because we know the time is short. It gets shorter the older you get. And we want to be sure that the Lord is happy with our life, that he is willing to accept us. We never want to go back on our promise because we made our promise to the Lord that we would serve him to the end. And that's what we want to keep trying and doing. And it's a joy. It's a joy to serve the Lord with our wonderful brothers and sisters. I enjoy the, these meetings. The Zoom meetings have just been a blessing to all of us. Thank you, Brother Jeremy. Amen. Beautiful comments. I like what you said about how it's little by little. You know, it's a slow process sometimes. But um, moving forward, though, is rewarding. And it's good to feel that way, that we're drawing a little closer each day. I um, had a good lesson tonight. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay. And I enjoyed it very, very much. Um, I spent 70 years, I mean, 70 years, October, I mean, uh, February uh, in the church. And um, I never regretted it one bit. I traveled a lot. I um, uh, spent all my money. I made good money. I was a general contractor, my son and I. And but I spent it. And I was hitting 70 years old. And I told my wife, I said, hey, I don't have a pension. And I said, I got to start saving some money. And so because we're not going to survive on social security. I had a piece of property, uh, 30 acres. The Lord told me 25 years, do not sell that property. Three times in 1995, he told me to sell my property. I sold my property. I had enough money to buy another ranch. I have a pension that is just marvelous. I have nothing to worry about. But I gave everything that I could while I could, while I was young. Now I can't. I can only pray for the brothers that are going that they would have great success. Having faith in Jesus Christ, he's going to take care of you at the end. And we thank God that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. May God bless you. Amen. Brother oh, Jeremy. This... Go ahead. I didn't see who was first. Hello. Hello. This is uh, Sister Barbara from Muncie. Hi. Hi nice there. Good night. Oh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to share an experience I had. Um, it was uh, not too long after I got married. I was already in the church. And um, my husband and I and my, my young son were living in a farm. So what happened was this, um, there was a, a fire in our, in our home that took place during the, during the daytime hours. Um, what happened was is, um, we lost everything that was in, in, in the house and stuff like that. Um, but, the, but the miracle I want to tell you about is um, everything in the, after the fire was over with, um, we went in and looked the next day and I went into the living room and I saw that everything was gone. The only thing that was saved out of the fire was um, in the corner of one room was the Bible and the Book of Mormon. And there was also um, literature from the church. They had, it had a few little bit singes on it, but both books were, the Bible and Book of Mormon were intact. 
And then I heard the spirit of God come over me and told me my, my words will never die. They are eternal. And um, to me, that, that says it all. That's been my cor cornerstone. Um, everything else is going to pass away. Um, but his word is life forever. And it'll never change. God's words will never change. It's there for everybody. And uh, we just, just like you said in your lesson, we have to believe and have that faith. Wow, that's powerful. Did we miss anyone else? Hello, uh, this is Sister Carmela. I like to tell a little experience. Um, right before COVID started, I woke up one morning and as I was fixing my bed, I heard a choir of men as if they were in a far off tunnel. And they were singing the words, God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. I knew something was coming and I knew God was gonna take care of me and mine. Three days later, they announced COVID on the TV and I have trusted God through this whole year plus and he has taken care of me. He's taken care of my family. He's taken care of my friends. And I pray continually that God will take care of all of the church, you know. And I could relate to you, Brother Ken, talking about smoking. I smoked. And I used to tell people, if I ever get baptized, I won't be able to smoke anymore. And the day I walked into the water, I came out and never prayed for cigarette. Trusting in God, because that's how... He put in my heart, well, to cleanse myself, I couldn't smoke anymore. Yeah. And God has taken care of me through many times. I have so many different experiences of how he's taken care of me that I've, I've written them all down. And I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful to the God we serve. I grew up in this church and I took a lot of the church for granted until God touched me one day in my kitchen while I was cooking dinner. And I felt his presence so strongly that I cried. I couldn't eat dinner that night. I couldn't do anything. I just cried. I was so filled with that spirit that was in my home. And I just praise God. I hope all of you feel that spirit at some point in your life. You know, it, it's carried me these many years. And I'm very thankful. I enjoyed your lesson very much. Praise God. You know, I feel such a stirring of, of the spirit. And uh, I enjoyed uh, your experiences and what you've shared. And we want to make room for that. We want to make room and opportunity for the saints to share the revelations and the experiences that God's bringing forth in your lives, because those are testimonies. And we believe, you know, they're testaments to God's power. And we believe in that power and that, that revelation that God gives to those who are faithful, even to the extent of not limiting his mighty hand, but believing that he can speak to his people. Um, you know, he brought, the Lord brought a message to me that I uh, preached upon not too long ago about how the Lord has more. And, you know, I feel tempted often to say that, to speak that same sermon again, you know, even if it's the next week or the week after, because he still has more and more and more. And I think sometimes we, uh, we sell ourselves short. We don't recognize maybe, uh, the potential we have in God, and he has so many blessings for us when we step out on faith. And I believe that he's calling for the church at this time to step out on faith in a greater way. Um, you know, I would say this, that 
if we're in our meetings, whether it be Zoom or in person or um, praying or your individual service to God in reading and prayer, if, if, if it seems boring or if it seems uh, taxing or burdensome, then we're not doing it right. It should be joyful. It should be alive in the power and the spirit of God. It should be fulfilling. And, you know, we were on a Zoom call last night. And in all fairness to, uh, to you all tonight, we started a lot earlier than we did today. But we were on there for almost three hours. And it wasn't taxing. You know, and as, I'll be honest, sometimes I get on, uh, you know, in the evening and I, I'm feeling a little tired. But that's the flesh. And when I set that aside and make room for the Spirit of God, that feeling of weariness, it goes away. And, you know, the comforts and the blessings of the Lord, when they fall upon us, they're so wonderful. And those are the things that lift us up. Those are the things that bring us uh, to life spiritually and, and keep us going. And I would just add that... Uh, I'm, I'm concerned sometimes that maybe the Lord is expecting more of us than we're expecting of ourselves. And I would ask that we might consider, you know, what is it that God wants from us? And maybe we need to raise the bar a little bit, uh, because I think that when we step out on faith, that he has even greater blessings in store for us. And I think he's wanting that from us, uh, that we would... Uh, be more filled, uh, you know, and I, I guess um, in a day and age of much anger and conflict and strife, and I don't know about you, but it's hard not to see it, even if you wanted to avoid it uh, and turn off the news, you still kind of get some of that spilling into your life, don't you? You know, just the, the contentious nature of the world. And, and we were talking on this uh, meeting last night that I, I referred to, about that. And we were asking ourselves and, and discussing this amongst the brothers and sisters, how are we going to contend with that in, in, in today's world? And the comment was made that we'll contend with it by the love of God. And you know, that's different. That's unique from the world. I'm not going out to yell and argue and join the fight. I'm going out with the love of God that I might conquer the things in that way, in a godly way, that would come against the truth. And so if we're filled with that love and that spirit, I believe we can go out into the world and make a difference. And, and it might be, uh, you know, with your neighbor, it might be uh, with a family member, it might be with a coworker. who knows, but let's not limit God. Whoever he would put in our path, let us be used of him, uh, that we might uh, make that sort of difference. And, and by the love and power of God, and, you know, as our sister Barb mentioned, uh, the word and the spirit, they were there at the beginning, <laughs> and they'll be there at the end. Amen. And that's what we hold on to. Mighty things, mighty things to hold on to. Any last comments before we? Uh... I'd like to. I'd like to tell another experience. Okay. You don't mind. Um, Sam, Randy, and I, in the early seventies, did a lot of traveling. Uh, of course, I built, helped build a building in San Carlos, and worked on Pine Top. We also went to the Navajo Reservation. I bought a bulldozer from. <laughs> California, all the way there, cleared a whole piece of land. And we wanted to plant fruit trees. Well, the weather is cold there, so there's only certain kind of fruit trees that will grow. So coming back, we had some nurseries around here where I live. And uh, I, asked, I asked one of the nurseries, what kind of trees will grow there and stand the cold weather? And they says that uh, a pear tree and an apple tree. And the guy looked at us too. We told him what we were going to do. He says, I'll donate 25 apple trees, and 25 pear trees. I'll donate them trees. And I have a two ton truck. So we loaded them on the truck and covered them up so they don't get blown away. 
and we took off for Arizona and uh, uh, from California to Arizona. And at two o'clock in the morning, we had a checkpoint and um, uh, before we can get into Arizona. The first thing they asked me for my registration for the truck and I didn't know where it was. So Sam and I would look over that truck. We finally found a slip and we showed it to him. And he says, what do you got in the back? He says, uh, we told him fruit trees and we told him what we were gonna do. He says, well, you cannot cross the border because you need to have them trees inspected by our agriculture department. He said, you got to call in tomorrow. And it was two o'clock in the morning. And Sam and I, we sat in that truck. They wouldn't let us cross. And I started to pray. And I said, Sam, we got to ask, Lord, we need help now. All of a sudden, the two uh, uh, guards that came to the truck, one guard said to the other, do you see any trees in this truck? And the other guard said, no. And Sam and I started that truck and we went across. That's where God come in. That's how God works in our lives. May God bless all of you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joe. So uplifting to I, hear the power I, of God. I, I tell you what, I got 70 years of experience. So. <laughs> Praise God. Brother Jeremy. Yeah. I got I got a prayer request for our brothers and sisters. Uh, my son, my youngest son, he's 16, uh, got COVID when back in November, Thanksgiving. Well, he, he's fine, but he hasn't got his taste or his smell back yet since mm -hmm. November. So the request is that he could get that back so he could taste what food tastes like again. Yeah. That's all he talks about. I'll be glad when I can taste food again. So a few brothers and sisters would, when you're in your quiet time, offer a prayer for Elijah that he could uh, get that back. I'll keep him in prayer. Brother Jeremy, yeah. Sister Donna here. I just got through talking to um, Sister Barbara Stracha. She and Brother John are in Mexico right now. But um, there's been a request to remember Brother Paul and Sister Shelby Stallard, because they also have COVID, but they had a really bad day today where Brother John had asked Paul to just take the blessed oil and put a drop on each of their heads. And Brother Paul didn't have the strength to even do that. Mm. So if we could uh, remember them in prayer too, it's, it's, it's gotten really bad. So they're home. They haven't had to go to the hospital, but they still need the Lord to touch them. Okay. Any other prayer requests tonight? I just want to say uh, to Brother Joe Sharola, thank you for all you've done for the church for many years. Amen. Thank you. Welcome. Amen. In, in just a moment, I'd like to ask someone who feels prompted or inspired to close our meeting in prayer. So uh, begin thinking about that. Um, but before we do, uh, we've heard a few requests tonight. Um, we need to pray with expectation and faith that God's hand can move. And uh, we know for Elijah or the Stallards or whoever might stand in need of uh, God's uh, touch tonight that he can do all things. Are there any other uh, prayer requests to, to add? Just remember Sister Arlene Buffington, too. Okay. Yeah. Brother Jeremy? Yeah. If you could please remember Sister Joan Rugolino. Okay. Sure. Well, I thank you for just being with uh, with us tonight, and it's a blessing to spend time together and to see your faces and hear your voices and to feel the Spirit of God as it moves and uh, to hear your testimonies. Uh, it's beautiful. It's very beautiful. And I think someone mentioned um, 
uh, our sister Carmela, Carmela was talking about, don't take the church for granted, right? Uh, we shouldn't take this for granted. Um, and so I thank God for each of you and for uh, your uh, presence tonight. And um, we'll continue to remember the uh, individuals in prayer um, that have been uh, mentioned tonight, not just as we close, but even beyond this meeting as we individually pray. Um, and I see a hand raised, uh, Sister Sharon. Is Was that a comment you had? Yes. Okay. I, I just wanted to say, Brother Jeremy, on Sunday in Lake Worth, Florida branch, they had uh, four ordinations, two deaconess and two deacons. And the sermon was help is on the way. Mm -hmm. And just a word of encouragement to our brothers and sisters that help is on the way. To be on beautiful i have a request okay yes uh, this is sister shelly um my niece's grandson he's four years old and he's been having seizures since he was born pretty much and um the mom Brittany, is beside herself it's night, day, anytime, like multiple seizures daily. I can remember, I don't remember the, my, his Brian. name. What's his name? Brian. No. Um, but Brittany's baby. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Brother Jeremy? Yeah. My sister uh, is 95 years old. She'll be 96 next month. And speaking to her tonight, and she's in a lot of pain with the lower part of her back. She couldn't even talk to me. It was so bad. Mm. If you remember her in prayer. Sure. Also, um, Brother Jeremy, if we could remember Brother Miguel Vassalis' um, son, Benjamin. He's one of the twins. He's going into the hospital. Um, they're checking his brain he had a very bad fall about a year ago and his memory has been coming and going and they want to check his brain and keep him overnight so between tuesday and thursday next week benjamin Baselis. thank you okay uh brother jeremy yeah also there's a uh, sister val wesley that's from saugeen that had asked for prayer last night. She's going through some very, very difficult times with her family, finding a place to live. All kinds of circumstances are trying to come down on her. And I, I think the evil one's trying to discourage her. Uh, she's working very hard for the church with the young. She's trying to uh, do the best that she can. and. Uh, she feels like she's going against all odds, being on the reserve and uh, doing what she's doing. But I told her that we all had decided on that meeting that Tuesday we would try to fast for our sister. So if anybody feels to, um, we're going to try to do that Tuesday. Her name's Sister Val Wesley. Well, um... I know uh, there's a lot of needs uh, and whoever offers our closing prayer, I know we, um, we have more names than we can mention probably, but let's continue to keep these all in our hearts. Uh, God's hand is mighty. And uh, we can imagine the, the sorts of needs that everyone has across the church, whether it be in health or spiritual strength or relationally or for provision, uh, all of these things God can provide. And so, does anyone have a, a desire to uh, offer our prayer tonight to close? Brother Jeremy, I'll pray. Okay, Brother Larry, go ahead. Our kind and righteous Heavenly Father, we... We are so thankful for your many blessings. Thank you for your word, Lord, that 
reaches down through the ages and touches our hearts and our minds and consoles us and strengthens us, gives us courage to go on. And Lord, in these trying times, Lord, we hear of all the affliction and all the many needs of the young and the old. Lord, I can't remember them all, but you know each one. You know them personally, Lord, and I pray that your spirit would reach down to them. Even at this very moment, Lord, may Elijah receive his taste back. Lord, make yourself manifest. As their brother said, there is more, more than we could imagine, Lord, and we pray in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, that you, O oh Lord, would be merciful this time. There are so many needs, Lord. And I pray that the list goes beyond this small group. But I ask that you would be with our sister Arlene, be with our sister Susan, be with our brother Scott, Lord. Be with the many, O oh Lord, that I don't know, but you do. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you would show them that you are a God of love, a God of miracles, a physician above all physicians. We place our trust in thee, Lord. We exercise our faith in your revelation. We believe, Lord, and we put our trust in you with the bottom of our hearts that you would hear our prayer. This is all we can offer, Lord, to thee. And we would ask this in the name of thy precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.